Hello and welcome ACCA Financial Management students. My name is Steve Willis. In this video, I'm going to show you how to forecast a statement of financial position. I'll take you through part A of the difficult past exam question Pumas, and I'll show you lots of spreadsheet tips, exam technique, and I'll show you how to save time in the computer-based exams, so keep watching. Here's the question that you can download from the ACCA website. The link is right below. We're looking at the March-June 2020 exam. We're looking at question Pumas. We're going to do part A1, forecasting the statement of financial position. So you guys give this a try at home. Pause the video, crack open the practice platform, find a blank workspace and do this in the spreadsheet. When you're done, roll the video again and we can compare our work. I'm in the practice platform. I'm in a blank spreadsheet. First thing to do in any difficult section C question like this, start with a template or a pro forma. Keeps you organized and it helps you create a shopping list so you know what information you'll need to find when you reread this scenario looking for the important pieces. And we know from the scenario there what the template should look like, the statement of financial position. So we'll just use the layout that they've given us. So there's my template copied directly from the scenario. I'm gonna double click on this column separator to auto enlarge that. I'm gonna make sure I tell the marking team that I'm working on part A1. And I'm gonna work in thousands to save time and to save typing. So I'm gonna come over here. I will use this single quote mark to show what I'm doing as text. I'll put a dollar sign and three zeros, that's the symbol that we're working in some countries dollars to the nearest to, to the thousand. Now, there's so much to unpack here and do. It's always a good idea to start with easy things. Get easy marks first. There are two figures right from the story that we can plug in. They tell us that our cash is going to be 700,000 and that the bank tells us to reduce our overdraft to 3 million. So we can go ahead and plug those figures right in. Go down to cash throw in the 700,000, go down to the overdraft, throw in the 3 million. Next easiest thing to do would be to update the current liabilities. We start with what? 18 million. There's no mention of paying anything back. They only tell us we're going to fund our expansion with debt. So we come up here to the non-current liabilities. That'll be equal to the 18 million plus the new 8 million there. Okay. And we get the 26 million for non-current liabilities. To finish off equity and liabilities, we're going to need some balancing figures. Let's go upstairs to assets and finish out the assets. And they gave us the ratios. So whenever they give you those ratios, you know you're going to need them. But the first thing we can do, they tell us that the non-current assets will increase by 11%. That's an easy thing to calculate. So let's throw in the 54070. It's increasing by 11%. So we just multiply by 1.11. There are our non-current assets. Now to do inventory, trade receivables, and trade payables, we're gonna use the, the common FM trick of using our working capital ratios to reverse engineer those numbers. And if you need to use part of the spreadsheet to get organized with uh, some, some workings or some notes, that is not a problem at all. You don't lose any marks for including workings or notes in your spreadsheet. There are no professional marks yet at this stage, okay? That happens 
when you get up to the strategic professional exams. So I want to just see what's happening here. And I remember that I days is equal to my inventory over my cost of sales multiplied by 360. In this question, they told us it's 360 days in the year. Putting that formula down helps me visualize where I'm going with the algebra. So I'm going to need to get cost of sales, which they said was 33% of sales and sales is, is increasing. So let's come over here. Let me do a couple of workings here. They tell us sales are increasing 18.7%. So I'm just going to grab the current year sales, which is 80768 multiplied by 1.187. Guys, there we have our sales. I can't read that. If I can't read that, the marker can't read it. Auto enlarge that column. And cost of sales is going to be 33% of that, isn't it? So I'm going to multiply that G4 by 0 0.33. And there we have our figure. Boy, it's getting quite messy. Let's apply a little tactical formatting. There are no marks for formatting, but let's be professional in everything we do. Plus, it's, it's a little difficult to read, so I can just grab my range here. I will do it showing my comma separators to two decimal places. That's what I have as an option. There we have it. Okay, now that I have my cost of sales and I have the formula there in D6, I can now use algebra to isolate that inventory line. So I have cost of sales, which is equal to this figure in G5. And what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to need to divide by 360 and then multiply by 50, the number that I found, right? That's the, that's the days. So we get the 4394. Guys, that 50 came from the scenario. And we can use the same approach for trade receivables. And the receivable days formula, well, that's going to be the receivables over credit sales times 360. And I'll use the same approach. We know our sales now. That's going to be equal to the G4 cell and we need to divide by 360, right? Because we're multiplying there. Divide by 360. We're isolating one of the variables. And then multiply by 60 this time. That's the target trade receivable days. And we get the 15, 9, 7, 8. Last but not least, we can come down here to trade payables. And we remember that the trade payable days is equal to my trade payables again over my cost of sales times 360 and using the same approach that will be equal to my cost of sales again divided by 360 multiplied by 60 again and there we get the 5272 friends at this point, it's just a little bit of balancing figure action and we can wrap this up. So we know total assets will be equal to everything we find in the assets section of our statement of financial position. So I do equals sum. I grab everything above. Now. I come downstairs, we know that assets are equal to total equity and liabilities. So I can set that figure in B20 equal to B9. Okay, now total equity will be the difference between my non-current liabilities and my current liabilities. So that will be equal to the total equity and liabilities minus the sum of my liabilities. There we go. We know that we're not adding any equity to the statement of financial position, so equity is going to stay at 6 million. 
So my new reserves, everybody will just be equal to my total equity minus my equity line. And there we have it, guys. That's everything you need to pass this part of the question with perfect marks. Okay, we can do a little bit of cleanup here formatting wise. We know everything below that. We could underline that to show the marker, right? That's a total below that. But guys, this is just icing on the cake, polish, no marks for this. Just helping the, the user of the spreadsheet see what we're doing. Yeah, we could put a total current liabilities, but don't think there's a mark for that. We, we, we did the work. Friends, there you have it. The exam technique for a forecast statement of financial position. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, feel free to throw down a like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Guys, good luck on your upcoming exam. Uh, this is Steve signing out for now.